I received a very interesting question today about a post I had in regards to a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in a hadith, I'll share the, the ending part of it. He says, and a person continues to be tested and facing trials until they reach a point in their lives, they will be walking on earth sinless. Not a single sin is in their records. So then a brother messaged me and he says, so this means if I'm still being tested, that means I got sins left to be purified from. Because if I'm done being purified and I'm sinless, I shouldn't be facing tests and trials. Interesting question, good idea. However, there's a bigger picture. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests a person, it's not always purification to clean you from any sins and wrong you've done in your life. But now you can go to an upgrade level. That person who's walking on earth sinless, they will get tested more than before. That one more time. That person who's sinless after all the hardship, difficulty in life, someone wrong, wronged them, someone oppressed them, they lost a loved one, all of that stuff. Now, sinless, la, next is even more harder than what they faced. And they will be able to pass, inshallah. What's the proof of that? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if Allah decreed or wants for you to reach a certain level in Jannah, but your actions are not qualifying you to that level, Allah will test you to make you reach that level. Don't worry, the hadith says, and Allah yu'inak, and Allah will help you to be able to pass that test. To give you an example, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, someone who went through so much hardship, Allah promised to forgive his past and future, yet he faced tests more than anyone put together. And with this, to this khutbah, inshallah, I'll share with you the example of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, he just left his city after his own father and his own people that he grew up in the middle of them and they tried to burn him to death. What a trial, what a test, what a musibah. It got so bad that he told his family, I have to leave. He had to leave and how difficult is it to move from the place you spent all of your life in. Eventually, Ibrahim السلام, leaves with his wife Sara radiallahu anha. And they left that oppression and that persecution and they passed by, by Masr, Egypt. And when they came there, there was a Fir'aun, a tyrant at that time. And the, his soldiers, when they saw Sara, they said, they went to the ruler and they told him, we saw a woman, oh, it's not befitting for any man that she can spend time with besides you. You're the only man that deserves this girl. Rasulullah sallallahu says, وَكَانَتْ أَحْسَنَ النَّاسِ He even said, alayhi salatu salam, she was incredibly, incredibly beautiful. May Allah make us beautiful inside and out. Amir Rabbil Alameen. So then, when Ibrahim alayhi salam, is getting that news and that vibe, you know, watch out, Fir'aun is going to go after you. He's, he's that type of guy. He goes after people's women and so on, especially your wife. I'm just giving you a heads up. Ibrahim alayhi salam, it's very stressful. And he didn't say, Ya Allah, I just left a musibah to a bigger musibah. He didn't say that. So he went to his wife, Sarah. He said, Sarah, listen, there's very likely chance that the soldiers will come to you to have you speak to the Fir'aun, that tyrant, that volume. And if they ask you, who am I? Because they want to know, what is my relationship with you? He's concerned if she tells them he, he is her husband, that he will kill him. So he told Sarah, Sarah, if they ask you, tell him that I'm your brother. Ana akhuki, i.e. akhuki fil Islam. Wa anti ukhti, you're my sister in Islam. And that's exactly what happened. The soldiers came, and you have to live that scene to as much as you possibly can of that stress knocking on the door, and then Ibrahim alayhi salam, whatever the area they were at when the soldiers came, and he said, who are you to this girl? So he says, Ana akhuha, I'm her brother. Then now the soldiers, they went to Sarah. And they said, who is he to you? She said, he's my brother. I'm his sister. So then they spared Ibrahim alayhi salam. They didn't kill him. So right then and there, as Sarah left, Ibrahim alayhi salam, only Allah knows how he felt. The hadith says, فَقَامَ يُصَلِّي Allahu Akbar. What's the thing that he can do now? 
Fir'aun, what capability Ibrahim has? No soldiers, no weapons, no or nothing. But he has bigger than all of that. Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than every means that we have. And he went to Allah. Wasalla. Wasta'inu bis sabri wa sala. Wa innaha la kabiratun illa ala al khashi'in. Allah says, seek help in salah and being patient. It's a big deal. May Allah make us remember salah during our times of distress. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen. So stressed out, praise to Allah, makes dua to Allah. And imagine Sarah walking into that palace, into that mansion. And as she is walking, obviously the soldiers see her here and there. And she just, she exceeds every single man's expectation. They heard about her, but she's above and beyond in her beauty until that Fir'aun sees her. The hadith says, فَلَمْ يَتَمَالَكْ لَمْ يَتَمَالَكْ He could not control himself. He didn't even was able to have a conversation. That's how good looking she was to him. And that's how weak he was and filthy he was. So he went and right away, Sarah radiallahu anha, she makes dua to Allah. She says, Allahumma, in kuntu amantu bika wa bi rasulik. Ya Allah, if I was a true believer in you and in your prophet, wa ahsantu farji illa ala zawji, and that I did not allow any man to touch me, no one to touch me except my husband, fala tusallit alayya hadha al-kafir. Ya Allah, don't make this kafir touch me, Ya Allah. I lived all my life modest, not allowed a single non mahram to touch me, Ya Allah. Right then and there, that Fir'aun started to shiver. And he start, he froze. His legs were going right and left as if he's having some extreme sort of seizure. And he's struggling. Then he tells her, Udrullah, ask your Lord to let go of me. I promise I will not touch you anymore. I will not attempt to come close to you. Please, please ask your Allah. So then Sarah says, Ya Allah, if he dies, people will say I killed him. So now it's a crime of murder. So then she makes dua to Allah to lift that seizure or that hardship from that king, that tyrant ruler. So when he comes back to normal, he's able to move his hands and legs. What does he do? He goes back to her. So she says, Allahumma in kuntu amantu bika wa bi rasulik. Ya Allah. If I truly believe in you and your prophet, and I safeguarded my body and private part from all men except my husband, don't let this kafir touch me, Ya Allah. And right then and there, that man, that Fir'aun froze again, shivered, legs kicking right and left. And he asked her, Ud'ullah, ask your Lord to stop this, I promise. فَلَكِ اللَّهِ Wallahi, I will not approach you. Wallahi. So then she says, Ya Allah, if he dies, they will say, قَتَلْتُ I killed him. So she makes dua to Allah. And that difficulty on that tyrant is lifted. And what does he do now? He goes back to her for the third time. Doesn't learn his lesson. So he goes to her and she says the same dua that I shared with you two times before. And I'll say it again. Amantu billahi wa rasul. Oh Allah, if I truly believed in you and in your prophet, and that I was a modest woman, that no man ever touched me except my husband, don't let this kafir approach me, Allah. And here you see Sarah radiallahu anha, she went to Allah with a righteous deed that she did, which was modesty. Of the, great, the greatest thing she can think of in this moment, she can come to Allah and be proud of what she did, is that, Ya Allah, I made sure I had haya, I had modesty. I, I wasn't looking at something that is haram. I didn't touch something that I'm not supposed to touch of the opposite gender. May Allah forgive us all, Ya Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be able to say that had we go through such scenario and may Allah protect us from ever facing that. Amir Rabbil Alameen. But are you able to say that? Are we able to say that if someone tried to harass us? If we have such past, then may Allah forgive us and Allah is the most forgiving. And we are hopeful we can go back to Allah that we can start a new page inshallah where we get to say that without even a hardship we go to Allah through any difficulty, yeah Allah, please, because I did this, this and that, because she tried to do this to me and I rejected her, because he did that to me and I rejected him and so on, may Allah give us that strength, ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. So she made that dua and he again shivered and he had that some sort of seizure and he asked her, I beg you, I beg you, this is, this is it. I will not touch you, just ask your Lord to stop what I'm going through, it's so painful, I can't move. Then she makes dua to Allah. And at this point, Fir'aun, at that time, he talks to the soldier that told him about Sarah. He says, إنك, إنك You brought me a devil. This is not a human being. Why? Because he felt like he's possessed. 
So the only way possession in such a way is a jinn, is some jinn, shaitan, devil that you brought to me. إِنَّهَا لَيْسَتْ بِإِنسَانَ مِنْ أَرْضِ he, She's not a human being. And that's what they will tell you when you have haya. That's what they will tell you when you have modesty and you fear Allah. You're not a human being. Look how old you're. You're in college and you're still a virgin. How is that possible? Oh, you never did this? Are you, you guys are weird. Are you, are you guys like one of us? Human being? And that's what the people of filth will tell the people of purity till Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So these stories Allah supplies to us through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for you to be reminded. وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Remind, the reminder benefits the believers. So this Fir'aun, to feel comfortable and safe, he told that lady, Sarah radiallahu anha, just get away from here. And he also gifted her a servant. At that time, they would gift like a servant, a slave and so on. So he gifted her Hajar radiallahu anha, who eventually become Muslim. Then when Sarah left that mansion as a victorious woman, now they will say whatever happened and accusations will take place. But la, Allah saved Sarah. And when she came to see her husband Ibrahim, what was Ibrahim doing? He was in Salah, Allahu Akbar. Salah at the beginning, in the middle and the end, because that's the one thing he has. The hadith says, while he was in Salah, أَبِيَدِهِ He couldn't wait till the end of Salah. He didn't say, let me finish the Salah. No, in the Salah, he's like, like what happened? And one narrator says, Mayhem, mm, mm. what happened? That's how stressed out he was. What happened to my dear beloved wife? Then she told him, Khair, Allahu Akbar, Khair. This is a woman who had tawakkul. Her husband who said, Hasbi Allah wa ni'm al wakil when they threw him into the fire. Husband and wife, may Allah grant for every righteous man a righteous wife. May Allah grant for every righteous wife a righteous man. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. So here, he, she said, Khair, Allah protected me from that kafir. And in addition, he gave us this wonderful servant as a gift. And this comes to show you the importance of many things that can be said. But Rasulullah Hudayfa says, كَانَ إِذَا أَهَمَّهُ أَمْرُ أو إذا يعني أشغله أمر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم when he was distressed كان يذهب إلى الصلاة he used to go to Salah bad news الله أكبر if you have the time and you have the place go for Salah ابن عباس رضي الله عنه he was traveling when he received the news of his brother قثم that he passed away he stopped his trip you know went to like a rest area and then he left the camel and he prayed and he was asked and he mentioned, like, why did you do this? He said, because Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek Allah's help and assistance in salah. This is how you'll be able to survive through the hardships of this life. May Allah protect us. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. At the end of the hadith, actually, I want to reference another hadith, which is the end of it. When Rasulullah Sallallahu came, many, many years later, he told the Muslims, إِنَّكُمْ سَوْفَ تَفْتَحُونَ مصر أو مصر You will soon conquer Egypt. So be good to the Egyptians. Why? لَهُمْ حَقٌّ وَذِمَّةٌ Because they have rights and they have family relationships. Why? Because Hajar radiallahu anha, she is the great, great, great grandmother of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. So this nasiha we also get from the story to be kind to those our brothers and sisters from Egypt. May Allah bless them and lift the hardships that they're facing. Our brothers and sisters here and all around the world. Ameen Rabbil Alameen.